Amy Lynn Stevenson. Yes. When you did that first workshop with us, and I, you know, kind of asked, well, gee, this is a three-hour workshop, and you're like, right. yeah, we spend one hour, I'm going to teach them how to paint, and then two hours working on the painting. And I'm right. like, okay, one, one hour to learn how to paint. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little yeah. unusual <laughs> it is it is it's like fast you have to work quick and it's a 16 by 20 canvas so it's pretty big you know mm -hmm. um but you know we, we everyone manages to get done and what i love too i love it when people have never drawn or, or painted before and this is their first time like it really doesn't matter you don't really need to know how because i i break things down into like how to draw the kitty into like basic shapes like this is a football shape Next to this is a round shape. This is a straight line. And I really break it down for people who've never drawn. I can take you through step by step. I mean, some people are just off to the races if you've drawn a little before, you know. And then the same thing with the painting. It's kind of paint by number how I start. You know, I'm just blocking in colors. And then it's a layering process. Like, and people, I think they they think artists have to get it all in one shot, but it's really you're going over the same area four or five times. You're letting it dry in between, you know. So so I'm kind of walking them through that, and then if people get in trouble, I have time to come around and like help too. Like if they're like I'm stuck, I don't know what to do, or this looks weird, then I can like explain to them how to fix it. So. Right. Well, one of the things that. Um... Uh, no, number one, the workshop you did for us, I was really impressed with the results, everyone's paintings, because oh, you. while you had everyone sort of, okay, this is the sort of format and such, mm -hmm. they were all very individual at the same time. Um, so it was really interesting. That, yeah, that yeah it's like, it's, you know, I'm, I'm walking you through, through step by step, but everyone's really choosing their, their own path and which way to go. And that can be different colors, the drawing turns out differently, you know. A different layering of the paint like everyone I, I love how everyone has a different work of art by the end right uh, really yeah. fun really yeah fun. they really did and uh, and they were they were all great there weren't some that say well that person you know never right. learned how to paint it, it was sort <laughs> of like they all nailed they all nailed it they they all did they all did a gorgeous job it was really really fun to watch <laughs> yeah which, which, which seems to happen you do your workshops right i mean they you, do they do i mean no one is un, unhappy I feel like when they walk walk away, and most of them are like really surprised that they were able to do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I feel like I'm able to sort of break things down into simple steps. As far as you know, the Cubist kitty, we have to draw this image of of a kitty with a fish fish bowl and like a little flower behind it. Is is what we're going to be doing. And these kitties can be all different shapes and sizes. Like nothing has to really. You know, everyone's drawing can look different at the end of the day. So I kind of explain different ways to go and different ways to like draw. So we'll start with pencil and then we, we do Sharpie over the pencil. And that can be a little bit scary for some people because you have to really choose what your lines are at that point. You know? right, that's making a decision. It's making a decision. <laughs> it's forcing you to be bold and brave at that point. And then we put the acrylic paint over top of that. And where the Sharpie really comes in handy is you don't lose your lines. Where if you just did pencil and added paint, your drawing is gone mm. completely. So this is a way to keep it. And then when I do my artwork, you know, I'll end up putting the Sharpie back in at the end. You know, because I, I like having those really dark, black, crisp lines in my work. But you could also paint it in a way that you don't bring the Sharpie back, that it looks more paint painterly. Okay. So you have a, um, a fairly distinctive painting style. I'd say a very distinctive painting style. Um, can you tell us something about how that developed or major well, influences? You know, I, um, I've always collected pictures of things, you know, and I would keep them in files. So like, um, even as a young artist, I was always like collecting other artists that I liked, sticking them in files or just finding pictures of things. And I've always been drawn to like art deco from a long, from way, way back, like the 20s and 30s, because everyone is stylish and dressed up, you know, and um, I've always just collected those images. So that just found its way into my art. But I think I do it in a very whimsical, colorful way. And also there's a lot of fairy tale that kind of makes its way into there too. But I've just kind of developed up on, I've come upon my, my own my, my own style, you know, that I just can't help, can't help but paint. 
-hmm. and uh, what 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 I like about it is if if you see a painting of mine, you like know that I did it. Right. You know, it's very clear. It's very clear. <laughs> yeah, and, you know that, that's an interesting thing because people become like like when you walk into a room, you see a Jackson Pollock, you say mm -hmm. you say, well, that's a Pollock. So they yeah. you, we actually identify that painting as the person in a sense. You know, I mean, oh, that's a Warhol. Right. <laughs> so, so you so you become a recognizable. Uh, so people can walk in the room and say, "Oh, yeah. there's Amy Lynn." There's Amy Lynn, exactly. <laughs> yes. Like I couldn't paint a dark or moody painting to save save my life. Like they can't help but be like very happy and playful. You know, it's just what comes comes through. Um, so looking at the paintings behind you, um, mm -hmm. I'm I'm a, I'm a writer, so I naturally look at them and I'm like, "Oh, that I, I see stories." Um, oh. When you when you when you're doing a work, do you, do you come up with a story, the, the backstory, what they call the backstory in filmmaking now? Right. I think the story comes to, to me, like, I don't think I plan out a story, but I think my characters definitely have relationships, you mm -hmm. know? So I think those things come through, but I think they're kind of a surprise to me, but I'm, I'm kind of looking for that, that moment. Like, I feel like I'm capturing a moment in time and there is a story there. And I don't always know what the story is, mm -hmm. you know? um, but like, you know, something like the Cubist kitties, you see their re relationships, just the way they're looking at each other or the couple behind me. That's a definitely very in, in love moment, right. you know, but uh, yeah, I just think of them as capturing like a mo moment in time. That's how yes. I think of 